प्लीज प्लीज टेक थैंक यू सो मच आसद यस सर आसद टेक टू मिनट्स एंड इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ सर माई नेम इज असद जुबेरी एंड आई वॉज बॉर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप इन सिटी ऑफ अलीगढ़ इन उत्तर प्रदेश आफ्टर डूइंग माई स्कूलिंग फ्रॉम आर लेडी ऑफ फातिमा स्कूल एंड देन अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी I went ahead to study mechanical engineering at MNIT Allahabad in Prayagraj sir. So thereafter I worked with an automotive automobile firm called Hero Motor Co for one year and since then I've been preparing for civil service examination. So my father is a retired employee from AMU, uh, my mother is a homemaker and my brother is an architect. And sir my interests lie in playing percussion instruments and I occasionally write blogs on a website called Kora. And on any subject you write or you have some preference of themes and subjects sir uh, the blog name that i have is called chai biscuit on kora say again sir it's called chai biscuit ah chai biscuit yes sir biscuit sir uh, yes exactly that is how we sir actually my father calls biscuit biscuit since childhood i know so i connect uh, that to my father and that's why i kept it as chai biscuit so the themes involved sir uh, like for example uh, recently i started writing a cron uh, a blog there called as bansi bhaiya chronicles oh so bansi bhaiya is a tea shop owner in front of my college in nit halabad and i have spent 4 years there so my experiences and my talks with him i sometimes write about it you see in fact uh, many a time if you would say that in spite of all the ups and downs uh india has done very well in the global community yes can you justify this statement that we have we have really in spite of all the handicaps and difficulties we have done well sir uh with uh, the essence of vasudeva kutumbakam that india uh, has that the world is one family so india has time and again proved itself as per its capabilities uh, to have an impact on the global uh, global community as a family sir so right after independence even when the resource was limited sir indian diplomats play, played a role in uh, korean war sir oh. sir after that uh, sir india has played a role in assisting many nations you see my my question was not relating to only india's international role but india as a country as a nation as a society has done pretty well in spite of all the all the hurdles and handicaps sir uh, i relate this to uh, the very rich indian diaspora that is working throughout the world fine yeah, that is a family. that is an indication of that you have done well yes sir. but have you really done well because when it comes to diaspora the chinese diaspora has done very well the mexican diaspora has done very well the israeli diaspora has done very well so diaspora is a very special category uh, within a country right normally they are in most places they are the top notch people in fact so you can't measure a country's performance based on how the diaspora has done even the lebanese diaspora has done very well they are amongst the richest people all over the world now come back to india on this argument that in spite of all the difficulties india as a country as a society has done very well sir uh, the elements that indian society carries like the idea of family the importance of family that indian society has and the culture uh, that the initiative always uh, let me with. let me help you in articulating this answer yes sir you can break down a country or society's performance in different macro features have we done well politically have we done well economically yes, have we done well socially have we done well educationally have we done well technology wise have we done well in terms of sustainability now on those parameters please tell me when you look at the whole world yes sir have we done relatively well sir uh, as far as the political uh, dimensions are concerned india is the world largest democracy hmm. and its credentials uh, to be the voice of the global south as well as uh, the world largest democracy is echoed throughout the world sir 
Now, when I say in spite of, now all right, in, in political uh, segment, we have done well in spite of the handicaps, which were those handicaps for political performance. Sir, uh, there were uh, some sort of in instability that even inside India had. Hmm. But Fine. Even One was that, that instability. But other causes? Sir, I'm sorry, I'm not able to... Uh, what were the drags on Indian democracy? Or on any democracy, in fact? So the power, the sharing of power or the transfer no, those of power are the, power. Those, that is the management of democracy, in fact. Yes, sir. What are the factors which come as a hurdle in the way of a democracy? Normally. And in spite of that, we did well. Sir, uh, time and again, there have been instances. Uh, no, when for example, illiteracy, poverty, yes, sir. inequality. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Even diversity. Yes, sir. In many places, comes as a, as, as a challenge for, for democratic systems. Yes, sir. So, in spite of all that, we are still world's largest democracy. Yes, sir. With good credentials, in fact. Yes, sir. Yes, nobody can accuse us of a second rate democracy. Yes, sir. So, that's a great achievement. Yes, sir. Indeed. Economically, now, all right. Now, I've given you a fair amount of hint. Economically, also, in spite of all the ups and downs, we have done well. Sir, economically, uh, the things that uh, in, like inequality, poverty and hunger, these were prevalent in India. And from the time in 1947, when India was a relatively smaller economy, we have come to a point where it's the fifth largest economy in the PPP terms and the third largest in the world. And, and sir, one of the very few economies which have consistently grown in fact. Yes, sir. In Indian economy, look at last 75 years. 40 years. Indian economy did not have a massive dip or a reversal. It might have grown at 2%, 2.5%, 3%, 4, 5, but it was consistently expanding and growing. Yes, sir. Now, this feature is very un, un, uh, uncommon in the world. You can look at even the most advanced economies, they have gone through cyclical process of ups and downs, right? But Indian economy has consistently grown, gone up. Then, what else? Diversity of Indian economy, sir. Uh, on Specialization socially. of Indian economy. Yes, sir. Sir, socially we are the one of the most diverse nation of the world, and oh. still uh, we are intact as a society that uh, sets up a very good example oh. on the countries where even technology now come to technology. I am helping you basically. Yes, sir. Kind of drive this, negotiate this question. Sir, uh, technology since it has been a very important part in Indian culture since a very long time. Uh, and even now, sir, uh, if we see the space, uh, ISRO has done very well, uh, so sending missions to uh, What Mars. are the other sectors in technology which have done very well? Sir, the other ISRO has done very well. Maybe atomic energy has done very well. What are the other sectors which people don't even remember? Sir, you have uh, done very well on many other uh, technologies. Can something, does something come to your mind? Sir, uh, one of the factors that I see is in the automobile sector that automobile I have Automobile sector, what else? Sir, uh, apart from that, sir, in the emerging technology, like uh, in the AI sec uh, segment. In the AI, we have done very well. What else? Sir, the IT and... Uh, yeah, IT, so IT is AI's sector, product. No, AI is IT's product. So, yes, when you say IT, I cover everything. What else? So, the manufacturing capability of India. Yeah. Because countries are seeing India when as a automobile, I thought you are referring to all manufacturing. What else? Sir, I am sorry, I am not able to. <laughs> all right. You have come across Motilal Nehru, Motilal Nehru for four years. Yes, sir. Fine. Are you aware of uh, Nehru report especially? What is Nehru report? Sir, uh, Nehru report was, uh, it was released in 1928. And uh, it was called as a Lord Birkenhead's challenge that was given to the Indians to frame their own constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, and sir, uh, the Nehru report came out with a suggestion of uh, an Indian constitution as a dominion uh, within the British system. Sir, very having linguistic... Very nice, sir. very nice. I said, uh, further, I would like to ask you that Nehru ji, Motila Nehru and Chitranjan Das, both were strongly in favor of joining the government. Yes, through sir. Swaraj party. Yes, sir. 
what was their logic of joining the government? And Gandhi ji was strongly opposing. What was their logic to join the government? Sir, uh, one of the logics that uh, they depended upon was that uh, joining the government does not mean cooperating with the government. But they wanted to join the government so that uh, the system in itself can be paralyzed in a way that the British cannot use it uh, against Indian interest. Sir, also there was one more reason that the British cannot, uh, Britishers cannot place the pawn uh, at the important places in the legislature, sir. So they wanted to oppose the government by being a part of the Very government. nice. Who had first raised slogan of complete Swaraj, Purna Swaraj? I'm not asking Swaraj, complete Swaraj. Who was that person? Sir, it was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose. If I say it was Maulana Hasrat Mohani, in 1921, Ahmedabad, I'm sorry, Ahmedabad Congress, he was the first person who raised complete Swaraj. At the same time, he was the person who raised In Kalab Jindabad. So we Sir, should. I, I read about uh, it. Yeah, fine. Yes. That's very nice. You stayed in Allahabad. Allahabad is a doab between Ganga and Yamuna. What is one advantage and one disadvantage of doab in terms of economy? Sir, uh, one of the advantages is that uh, the Doab region is fertile because of the fresh alluvium uh -huh. that the rivers bring, yes. uh, which increases the agriculture productivity of the region. Uh -huh. uh, sir, as far as the disadvantage is concerned, sir, one, one factor is the management of the river systems there because a lot of tributaries flow through the region. Uh -huh. And sir, we have seen the issue of pollution uh, that uh -huh. is caused uh, in the rivers uh, that pass through the Doab region, sir. So mm -hmm. this is a challenge in front of us to manage mm -hmm. the rivers in a better way. Right. Indian standard time is also calculated from the place near Allahabad. What is that place? Which place it is? Indian standard time. Sir, I have read about it. I'm not able to. Okay, no problem. Place. What is the time difference? How, how many minutes per degree it changes? What is the mean? How many minutes? Sir, um, Three, four, five, six. How many minutes per degree time changes? Sir, uh, uh, per 15 degrees, sir, uh, there's a difference of one minute, sir. If I, as far as oh, you are right. Don't doubt yourself. Sir, actually, four, I yeah, four minutes per degree. Yes, sir. So 15 degree, one 60 minute. minutes. That's a fine. Very nice. One last question I would like to ask you. Your first choice is IFS. Yes, sir. It's very nice to see. Sir would be... Honorable Chairperson would be the happiest person, I think, that one young man giving first choice. Yes, sir. I would like to be basic that what is the difference between High Commissioner, Ambassador and Charles D. Affairs? Sir, uh, the High Commissioner is a diplomat who is posted in a Commonwealth countries uh, mission, sir. Mm. However, the Ambassador is uh, posted in a non-Commonwealth country, mm -hmm. sir. Sir, chance day affairs, I will okay, have to no read problem. about it, sir. Uh, what was the main objective of formation of Commonwealth? When it formed? Sir, uh, mm -hmm. it was formed after the British, after decolonization or that the Britishers did, mm -hmm. sir. And the objective was that uh, to uh, to extract the... No, I wonder, Asad, I wonder one thing. That in 1942, we asked quit India. In 1949, within seven years, we went to British Crown. Ki, Madam, we want to come to this. What was that situation that we preferred to join Commonwealth? What was the mean of what we thought that, yes, it would be advantageous to join Commonwealth? Sir, one of the advantage was on the economic fronts. So because okay. India was a growing a very at a nascent stage of economic growth. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, seen as an opportunity where these countries can collaborate because of their common uh, problems and their common uh, <coughs> history of British colonization, sir. And apart from that, sir, it was uh, by our Honorable First Prime Minister, it was said that it doesn't mean that uh, the country has to abide by anything that the Britishers would say within the Commonwealth. And it was seen as a positive move to join the Very Commonwealth. Very nice. Place. In a way, collective. Yes, collectiveness. Sir. Because after nuclear bombing of Japan in Second yes, World War, the world, especially developing countries, have been very much insecure. Yes. So when you feel insecure, even in Delhi, you want to move in group. Yes, so it's a kind of collective, not exactly formal security, but yes, it was. Very nice. Last question, I 
I wonder, sir, that why is the one country is secular? Why should there be name like Aligarh Muslim University, Banaras Hindu University, Khalsa College, Christian Irvin Christian College? Why should there be name of these Muli Muslim Hindu? Why is it, sir? Uh, one factor is the historical importance that the institutes carry uh, in the situation that they were these were found, sir. For example, sir, in the AMU Act 1920, uh, in in its Article Five. No, Article again, I am asking system. same thing. Don't you, you have been a student, so uh, maybe sometime you also thinking of yes. why should there be Banaras Hindu University, Aligarh Muslim University? We sh we are secular state. Why? Sh how can we justify, sir? Uh, these institutions, sir, uh, all the more add to the secular uh, credentials of a country in the sense that. The name of Aligarh Muslim University has the students from all but the. But if I say, sir. if I'm helping Asad, Asad, it is Article 29 that empowers us to have education and cultural right. Yes, sir. Based on that, we are promoting this kind of institution. Nothing against secularism. Will you accept this argument? Article 29. Sir, Article 29 uh, also talks about the section of uh, the population, not only about the minority, sir. Okay. So it talks about the section of the uh, population having a rich culture, language, or script which Very they nice. can protect, sir. Very nice. And sir, giving a thank you, sir. I am happy. What was the special packages given to the tribal groups, sir? Uh, one of the uh, major missions that came uh, as, as a scheme was uh, PM PVTG mission, and sir, around uh, twelve thousand crore uh, has been disbursed under this mission, and sir, the particularly vulnerable tribal groups have. Largely been uh, at a disadvantaged position, and it will. It uh, we are hopeful that it will help them, sir. Now, do you think this is the first time that something has been told about the tribal groups, or even before that, there were provisions in the tribal or tribal areas? If yes, what were those, sir? Uh, there have been provisions continuously, sir, like the tribal sub plan strategy, which is which is at work uh, for the proportionate distribution of financial resources. According to the population of tribes, and what sir. is that proportion, sir? Around eight point six percent, sir, mm -hmm. of the Indian population is the ST population, and the tribal sub plan works right from the highest level uh, on of the country to the lowest level of the local government, sir, ensuring the proportionate distribution of funds. So this is one of the strategies, sir. Apart from that, there is a conservation come development plan that is working specially specifically for the PVTG community, uh, and sir, recently in the budget, uh, there is there has also been a Initiative on sickle cell anemia, uh, which is a disease uh, that uh, is prevalent among the tribals. So the management of that disease is sir, something that the government is looking. Why for. sickle cell anemia is prevalent in tribals only? Sir, uh, it has its genetic basis. And, oh, what uh, what is that basis like? Sir, uh, there is a gene of hemoglobin, the HBS gene, which mm. is if present, sir, uh, the sickle cell anemia, anemia can come. Uh, and no, but uh, why in tribal groups only? Why not in other groups? Other social groups, sir. Uh, one of the factors that is prevalent is that the gene flow that happens, the cross marriages, uh, sir. They are not happening. They are also happening in, with a less amount between the tribal and the other communities. But do you think that by the same analogy, uh, Persians will have this similar kind of diseases because they are also having a close uh, marriages and there is a yes, problem sir. of inbreeding. Yes, sir. The problem of uh, sir inbreeding or breeding with the close relatives, sir, it increases the homozygosity, uh, which may lead to uh, the appearance of such diseases, uh, sir, in the human being. So uh, it is advised that uh, inbreeding should not be promoted in this sense. Sir. In twentieth century, if you consider who are the two big world leaders who have influenced you or whom you think that yes, they have done some commendable work, sir. Uh, the leaders in sense the individuals sir or the countries yes, individuals sir uh, one thing in the 20th century sir i would uh, say the the efforts of uh, mahatma gandhi sir okay uh, they have been very prominent okay uh, mahatma gandhi another one sir uh, may i take 10 seconds to think about it sir uh, the second leader that i can think of is mother teresa Okay, now tell me both the persons. They did commendable work, and like if you take Gandhi, nobody follows Gandhism. 
Naxalism, everyone follows. So don't you think that Kanu Sanyal or the Charu Majumdar, they had a greater influence on the society than Gandhi? Or Mao Tse Tung for that matter? Sir, uh, some of the element of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy, sir, they are entrenched in the Indian society as well as the constitution at large. But sir, it is very unfortunate that we have uh, groups, small groups like uh, the Naxalism, uh, for example, and or, or, or sir, terrorism that is prevalent. Sir, these are the challenges that we need to tackle using the tenets of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's Thank philosophy, you. sir. How do you, uh, what difference you, find, you find, find or you found uh, when you migrated from AMU environment, I mean, sociological environment, to the MNIT environment? Sir, uh, one of the major differences was that, uh, sir, it was a residential campus in uh, the in NIT Halabad, sir. However, I was staying at, at my home in Okay, AMU, so you were a day scholar. So yeah. I had, yes, sir, in AMU I was a day scholar. Hmm. So I got the opportunity to interact with the people from the entire country. And even beyond, sir, uh, I was friends with uh, say students from uh, Maldives hmm. and uh, say students okay. from Sri Lanka we, who came through ICCR uh, scholarship. Hmm. And so that was uh, one of the points when I got interested in knowing about the Indian foreign policy and its outreach in the neighboring countries. Okay. Sir, that was a very enriching experience. Hmm. Sir, apart from that, there was one difference that I saw was the interdisciplinary nature of uh, education that NIT Allahabad was following. Sir, a student yeah. of... Uh, Civil engineering was allowed to conduct experiments of physics in the laboratory and it was very much accessible in that regard. Okay. Sir, uh, I'm sure that AMU also has such uh, provisions, but sir, I could uh, not get the opportunity to do that. Access or opportunity. Yes, okay, that's very nice. And uh, why Bansi Bhaiya has so, so much uh, impact on you? Sir, uh, one of the factors was that uh, Bansi Bhaiya has his tea stall at, since 1962 at the same location. Mm. So, he tells us that how he has seen the generations of students passing out from colleges and how their interactions have changed. So, the, my very recent uh, blog post that I wrote about that he used to tell us that uh, there was a time when people used to celebrate birthdays on his tea stall and the cake cutting was there. But, but we have now they go to restaurant. When people are just uh, looking into their phones. So, and sure, less so, so this, is, this brings very interesting uh, di dialogue. Should we have too much formalization of systems or formalization as informal economy to formal economy, informal society to formal society, informal agreement to formal agreements? Are we becoming too legalistic, formatted kind of um, monochrome? Sir, uh, as far as the economy is concerned, the formalization uh, bears benefits, sir, hmm. uh, because uh, formalization helps in enforcing the labor rights as well as ensuring the good working conditions for labor in that uh, uh, establishment. Sir, as far as the society is concerned, uh, sir, I feel uh, some sort of informalization is good for in uh, the cross-cultural interactions to happen. Hmm. And uh, if we stop those interactions from a law legal point of view, sir, that may harm hmm. too. Okay. Sir, what is the India's uh, SDG progress? Sir, uh, India has been on the forefront in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. There, this is not required. I am telling progress so far. What is sir, its attainment uh, so far? Sir, the goals for uh, uh, renewable energy, uh, sir, these goals are uh, on uh, good. Have you read uh, the report, recent report? Sir, I am sorry I have not read, but I uh, just... Uh, saw that India has not fared on a very score? good rank, sir. What is the score? Sir, I'm sorry. Rank. I, I'll read about okay, it. Okay, so you read about yes, it. Sir. Okay. Um, right now, uh, the politics is playing out in respect of judicial appointment. Yes, sir. Now, if the judiciary is coming on board in the selection committee of every appointment, Okay, which the executive used to do, and recent case is the election commission. Will there be any rationale for judiciary appointing themselves? Sir, uh, one of the major factors that is required in, in it is transparency. And the collegium system that was uh, present, so that is present and it's under debate. So that is one thing that is not present in it. So only uh, sir, judiciary is appointing 
its own uh, judges sir i think uh, it will be better if the representation no, suppose they they do it transparent they say i we have done this we have this is the acr they give transparent thing even then the logic of that the executive can do all wrong and we, and unless the judiciary is there it, the system cannot be clean right but in case of judiciary appointment nobody should make it clean what is the logic sir uh, the logic of checks and balances that is present yeah in the absolutely the check and balance should work in, in the should judicial work in judicial appointment too yes sir right asad your interview is over now yes, sir. Thank you.